how do we go about doing proofs in logic? What do we mean by a proof system? What do they look like? How do we use them? And what do we mean when we distinguish between proof and semantics? Let's find out. Hello everyone, welcome back to Attic Philosophy. On this channel we're talking about everything from abstract metaphysics to applied social issues and this is a series of videos introducing formal logic. We're starting with propositional logic. In this video we're focusing in on proof systems. This is going to be a basic introduction to what proof systems are, what they're for and how they differ from semantics. The idea behind proof theory is it is a tool that enables us to take some premises, to infer some sentences from them and get to a conclusion. If you've been following along with these videos on introducing propositional logic, you might think, aha, that's like a truth table. We've already seen how to use truth tables to test whether conclusions follow from premises in propositional logic. However, I want to make a distinction between truth tables as a technique on the one hand and proof theory on another. And there's a number of reasons for that. Let me just quickly show you what a typical kind of proof would look like in really schematic outline. So typically when we do a proof, it's a syntactic technique. So we take a sheet of paper and we write some premises down at the top of the paper. And then we use our proof rules to derive sentences from them. So these are inferences that we are making along the way. And we keep repeating that until we can get to our conclusion. If we can do that, then we say that these premises allow us to derive this conclusion. And we have a proof of the conclusion from the premises. So that's kind of what a proof is going to look like in outline. Looks quite different to a truth table. So I want to make the distinction between proof on the one hand and semantics on the other. Semantics is when we are talking about truth and meaning. So whenever we're doing a truth table in propositional logic, we're doing semantics. So truth is over on this side and we're going to contrast that with proof over on this side. Truth tables are perfectly good ways of calculating whether conclusions follow from premises in propositional logic. So why do we want a proof system in addition to our truth tables? Well, there's a number of reasons for this. Some of them are more practical, some of them are more philosophical. So one reason is truth tables, they work great in propositional logic, but they're not applicable to more powerful logics. So if we include bits in our logic like quantifiers, every, some, most, many uh, modal operators, it's possible that it's necessary that temporal operators in the past, in the future and things like this, we can't then use truth tables. OK, truth tables then aren't any help in working out whether premises follow, uh, conclusions follow from premises. Proof systems then are really useful. And it's not just when we move to more powerful logics. We also have logics which stick with the five basic connectives, but they disagree with the propositional logic that we've been looking at, classical logic. They disagree with that on what those connectives mean. For instance, intuitionistic logic differs from classical propositional logic on what the arrow and the negation mean. So whereas we can use truth tables in classical propositional logic, we can't use truth tables in intuitionistic logic. So there's two reasons why we don't use truth tables all the time. There are also more philosophical reasons, OK? So some philosophers of logic will argue that the meaning of a term like and or or shouldn't be given in terms of its truth conditions, that is through semantics, but instead we should consider the meaning of the term to be given by the way it's used as kind of a Wittgensteinian notion and the way a logical term is used is typically in a proof. So we look at the proof rules for and or 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 whatever and that is what gives it its meaning. And there's also more practical reasons. Sometimes it's just much easier to check whether a conclusion follows from a premise using proof techniques rather than going via whatever semantics we have to hand. OK, so sometimes proof techniques are just easier to use. 
Okay, so there are some reasons why we would be interested in focusing in on proof rather than truth via semantics. So I said that the idea in a proof system is that we write down some premises, we make some inferences from them, and hopefully by the end we get to our conclusion. Now there are lots of different proof systems out there, and they all do this in a slightly different way. Before getting to the exact specific kind of proof technique we're going to use, which is going to be natural deduction Fitch style, I'm just going to give you a flavour for how proof theories in general set out proof rules. So suppose we're doing a proof and we've got A and B in it. Either it's a premise or it's an assumption or we've derived it already. What can we infer from that? Well, pretty obviously we can infer A from it. So we have this proof rule from A and B, I can infer A. And similarly, if I've got A and B, I could infer B. So I can infer both A on its own and B on its own from A and B. And similarly, if I have two things in my proof, A and B on their own, either as premises or as prior inferences, I can infer A and B. So these rules together give me ways of handling and in a proof context, I can eliminate it, that is I can go from something with and in it to something else, one of the conjuncts, and I can introduce it. I can go from A and B, the conjuncts, to the conjunction. Here's another rule that we've met in previous videos. If I have a conditional, an if then, if A then B, and I've also got the antecedent in the proof, so I have both if A then B and I've got A, I can conclude the consequent. B. This is known as modus ponens. It's got the form if A then B and A, therefore B. Here are some rules involving disjunction or if I have A or B in my proof and I've also got not A, then I can infer B. This rule's known as disjunctive syllogism. And here's another rule involving or. If I've got any old sentence A, I can infer from it a or B. Okay, to make sense of that one, it might help to think back to the truth table. The truth table tells us that if A is true, then A or B is true. That's one of the ways in which A or B can be true. But just to note, we're not so much justifying these rules in terms of the truth table right now. We're just thinking about them directly in terms of acceptable inferences. Okay, if I have any sentence A, then it's acceptable to infer A or B from it. So that's it for today's super short video there. Stick around for the next one where we're going to go into more detail. If you are enjoying this series of videos on introducing logic, why not subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to get updates. I'll see you back next time. <laughs>